Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at what to do if your PC won't boot. Now, if you've built your PC and it's not booting up, or maybe you've got an older PC that's not booting up, then I'm going to show you what to do. You power on your PC here, and what happens is you get all the lights coming on, the fans are spinning, but you're getting no display. And this is pretty common. This could be many different reasons, and I'm going to go through some of the things to check. Especially if you've got a brand new computer, this happens quite a lot to people. You'll get no signal uh, found or you'll get something like that coming up on the screen. And it can be quite baffling. So I'm going to show you what to do and how to troubleshoot this. There's lots of things you can check and I'll show you how to do this without paying any money to any sort of PC technician. So first off, you can see here we do have a no signal and that's telling me that we're not getting any display on the computer this could be quite a few things but first off let's work with the graphics card here and what we're doing here because this is probably one of the most common things but before i show you some of the steps let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor cd key sales if you've just built your pc and you want to activate windows for cheap then check out the links in the video description use my promo code capital b capital r 09 apply this to your order and you'll get a 30 percent discount once they send you your key, you can go ahead and head over to the activation center and activate your version of Windows. So let's get back to the troubleshooting here. The first thing you want to do is make sure all of the connectors are plugged in and they're fully all the way into the board. The CPU power cable is this one right here up at the top left hand corner. Make sure that's plugged in if it's a new build. Also, make sure that you've got the 24 pin and the RAM is already seated nicely into the computer make sure they're not half out and they're fully seated all the way in and the correct way around the 24 pin is just down here and this needs to make sure that you've got all of the cables plugged in here there's normally a little four pin and also a 20 pin so make sure they're all plugged right in to make sure you're getting all the proper power to the motherboard itself when you power the uh, power switch on if this is not powering on, then you can check the power cables down on the bottom right hand side, which I'll show you a bit later on. Make sure you've got your power cables into the graphics card and we're getting good power to the graphics card itself. Rather than split power on the graphics card, use separate cables to power the graphics card itself. The power supply could be faulty. Always check your power supply with a known good power supply. Also make sure the cables are firmly seated inside if it's a modular power supply. It's important that you check these because when you move it about or you're doing cable management, any of these cables can work loose. Especially if it's a tight case and you're moving your hands down inside trying to do some cable management, it's quite easy to loosen some of these. So make sure you check all of the cables inside the case. Make sure you take them out and push them back in and make sure they're seated all the way home. And this way you'll know you're getting good power to there if the power supply is bad then you can run into problems make sure you've got adequate power for the computer to boot up correctly and work correctly this is another common problem i see hdmi cable plugged into the back of the motherboard on the io shield here this is another common issue where people plug it into the wrong location and you'll get no signal this is where people tend to plug it in by accident when they're in a rush and of course you if you've got no onboard graphics here you're not going to get any sort of display so bear that in mind uh, if you're plugging it in there. Make sure you're plugging it directly into the graphics card itself. It's an easy mistake to make. A lot of people do make this mistake, uh, but do check and make sure your cables are plugged into the right location. Once we've got that in there, we can power it on and then give it another test to see whether you get any sort of signal. So once you power on the PC again, once we've plugged it into the correct location here, you can then check to see whether you do get any sort of screen display and there we go straight away we can see the motherboard logo and it's now starting to boot up that's another common issue i'll show you some other ones which are pretty common for uh, pcs not booting up as well which i'll cover in this video also another common issue is when you power the pc on and it automatically shuts off or it goes into some sort of reboot loop here you can see it's shutting down we get no signal and then it's powering back on and if you look at the diagnostic lights right next to the RAM on the motherboard here, this can help you troubleshoot and diagnose problems with your computer. You can see there's a bunch of LED lights on here saying DRAM, which is yellow, CPU, which is red, and we can also see white, which is VGA, and boot is yellow and green. 
So the DRAM was showing here when it was booting up, you can see there's an issue going on with the computer. Let me just show you here close up so you can see. You can see it's going through the sequence of LEDs here and it should go to yellow and green, which means it's booting up okay and you're getting a perfectly booting uh, system. If you start to see red, white, or any of the other colors coming up on here, you know you've got a problem with your computer. Normally it tells you roughly where to look. Now another problem that people do is as soon as they build their computer, they go straight into BIOS and start messing around with XMP and other settings, or they may get the timings wrong on their RAM and it can cause a lot of problems. You can get intermittent shutdowns or you can get non-booting systems like you'll get here. If I deliberately upped uh, the RAM speed here to more than what the uh, PC can take, it will just do this little shutdown and restart like this and you'll get the LED lights showing up on the screen here. So bear that in mind and always check here and you can always clear the CMOS if you don't know what's happened and you can always uh, check your RAM sticks. I would generally uh, take all the RAM out and leave just one stick on and to see whether we can get any sort of boot up with just one stick of RAM and then work your way through uh, with each stick and see which one is bad. Another thing you can do is also uh, check to make sure the bank or the slots on the board are okay because sometimes these can go bad or they can come bad from the factory if it's a brand new system. And uh, you want to pull these sticks out and try just to boot it up with just one stick in it and then change it for another stick and keep trying it until it replicates the same problem. If you've been messing around in the BIOS, maybe reset your BIOS uh, back to default settings or your CMOS back to default settings by removing the battery and clearing the CMOS. I'll show you how to do that in a second. I've shown you how to do that in uh, previous videos. And all you're doing here is going through each individual part to check to see where the problem lies. So this is a, an error with RAM. And of course, this is where you'll need to put all your attention is on the RAM. If it's a, a hard drive issue and you've got an hard drive issue, maybe check the hard drive. You can do a quick check to see why you're not getting any boot up with the hard drive. You can remove this and what I generally do is I'll bypass it with a well-known good uh, drive with uh, an operating system on it that does boot, plug it into the system and then bypass that and take it out and make sure to see if it boots. If it boots, then your drive's bad. It's pretty straightforward stuff. So once you've done that, you can then move on to the next bit, which is obviously checking and clearing the CMOS. If the GPU is going bad and you're getting no display, you can also try putting in another GPU and uh, this is a non-powered GPU here you can see there's no power to it so it's very affordable and if you're doing a lot of PC uh, building or a lot of uh, PC repair then you definitely need some sort of graphics card so you can change them out to quickly test them I know it looks a bit silly in the case but all you're trying to do here is to see whether you can get a post or get some sort of boot up to the system and it doesn't need any additional power here and if you do get it, then it could be a problem with your power supply or the graphics card. And you can then go down and troubleshoot further. Now, if you look at the LED lights on the board here, the diagnostic lights, I already know what the problem is. But you can see it's gone white and uh, the fan is not spinning on the chipset here where it was before. So I know there's a problem somewhere. And uh, we can now troubleshoot this even further by looking at the diagnostic manual because the light is now showing a solid white color. Let's go ahead and uh, troubleshoot this a little bit more so you can see, and you'll be able to work out roughly what the problem is. So now we've got the cable plugged into the graphics card correctly. It's not spinning up properly here, uh, but we do have the pump spinning, and we also have the fan spinning, but we do have that LED light stuck on white, which is now telling us that there's an issue with the graphics card. If you check your user manual, you can see up close here, it's solid white. And this tells us there's a problem with the VGA, which is our graphics card. So let's take another look at the user manual. Again, there's a diagram in here telling you exactly the white light is your VGA and it's a problem. So when you get people on the internet showing you how to build computers and throwing them on the floor, when they're building a computer to say you don't need it, they don't know what they're talking about. This is really important because this will help you troubleshoot and diagnose issues that you may have with your PC. So we can clearly see that the light on there is white and we now know that this GPU is bad or there's some sort of problem with it. Either it's a power issue 
or whether it's the slot on the board or whether it's the actual graphics card itself. Next up, you want to make sure the pump is working correctly. If you have a closed loop wall cord system, make sure water is flowing through, make sure you've got power to the pump and make sure everything is working OK with that closed loop wall cord system. You may want to make sure that you've uh, seated it correctly because the CPU could be getting hot. If you're running a CPU cooler, which is like a normal air cooler, make sure you've got power going to it and the fan is spinning and keeping the CPU cool because if the CPU gets hot, it will automatically shut down and you might not even be able to boot. So always check those locations uh, on there. Now, if you've got a problem with your drive, the best thing to do is remove the drive from the board, especially if the PC is not booting, then you can also uh, bypass it by putting another drive in or you can use an SSD with Windows on it and boot to it to see whether your PC boots. If it doesn't boot, then it's not the drive and it's something else. So we've now uh, checked everything else. You might want to clear the CMOS if you've been messing around in the BIOS. Also clearing the CMOS does help. So a good thing to do is either remove the battery or you can use the jumper pins to jump uh, the actual uh, CMOS to clear it. I've shown you how to do this previously. All you need to do is remove this, remove power to the actual computer and push the power button down to clear any power that's left in the computer. And it will also clear the CMOS and put it back to default settings, especially if you've been messing around with memory settings and things like that or overclocking. This can cause issues. So I've removed the graphics card here. This will give us access to the battery. So if you want to clear that CMOS, you can either remove the battery uh, from the computer or you can use the little jumper pins in your user manual again it will show you where this is located on the actual board i made a video separate about this on how to clear the uh, cmos and you can see here it tells you there's two pins on here and you can short them uh, with a, a natural screwdriver or you can sometimes have a little button or they sometimes have a little switch uh, that you switch across or sometimes they have a little jumper that you can actually locate here also check the front panel connector on the motherboard. If you're getting no power to the computer whatsoever and it's completely dead, it's either the power supply is bad or the actual front panel connectors is not connected correctly. And this is down on the bottom right hand corner here. If you don't have the power button connected uh, to this, it's not going to power on. And you can short this with a, a screwdriver as well. I've made a video showing you how to do that. Very simple and easy to do. And this is how you can quickly troubleshoot uh, any issues like that. It's important that you've got a good power supply. I can't stress that enough because it's very common that power supplies are bad or that the power supply is underpowered and you're not getting enough power to drive the big graphics cards they have today. So make sure you've got plenty of power and make sure that it's a good power supply. Hopefully, if you follow all these steps and uh, you watch the video all the way through, you can always go back and re-watch it again and follow each step and just check as best you can. And you should get your PC back up and running in no time at all. And I hope this has helped you out. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group, whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three. I really do appreciate the support. Hope you have a lovely weekend and I shall catch you on the Discord server for a chat or I'll see you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.